Hello and welcome to the CNC with Dave Gatt show. I am so excited to have my buddies Javi and Russ Meadows hanging out with me tonight. Look at look at Russ represent, buddy. I look. got it, baby. All right, so happy you're here. Ah, uh, let's uh, let me check the comments here. Let's see, we had a, quite a few got folks. Got a waiting. bunch of them. Yep. All righty. Let me I'll run down a few of them here. Dave Clemens, Wayne Hurl, Steve Grosky, Becca Miller, Dave Krause, Mario Medina, Ray Jones, Troy Pritchard, Leo Steger, Jerry Bonifield, Dave Matthews, Dave Clemens, Jerry Brown, Rob Schuster, Gary Hammett, Wood Creations, Richard Kowalski, Carl Whitaker. Good to see you, Carl. Kevin Wilkinson. Uh, what does that say? Something B Todd Cox, I think. Yeah. Carl Steed, Marcelo Ballon, I think. Bayon. Roger the Tinker. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Kevin Harder, Raymond Dixon, Mako Shark, Andrew Haig, Charles Lawrence, Chuck Cobb, bunch of you folks out there. Dave Mitchell, Steve Nealon. How you doing, Steve? Good to see you on here. Uh Thank you all for joining. We are doing another, you know, typical thing here, like we've been doing, uh, kind of a Q&A type thing. And we do have a few photos to show. It's not necessarily a show and tell show, but we show them anytime somebody sends them. And uh, got a few of them to show. Yep. But... Uh, Happy that you all are here. Does anybody have any questions? We'll do those first, I guess. If anybody's got any questions they want to ask about any kind of CNC stuff, we, uh, I do have, I already got some of the pictures queued up here. And Jerry, I'm glad to see you out there because you sent yours last week just about the time I was signing off, I think. But I'm going to show it. First, in fact, today, I've already got it queued up over here. And since you're here, because I don't remember if you said much about it. Mm. Well, you better grab him before he gets to, uh, gets to his food, so. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get to this then. Yeah. Um, This is the one Jerry sent just as I was signing off last week. And the only thing he put in here was that it was a Father's Day project. So, Jerry, if you're out there and you want to share any other information, like what kind of wood it is, how big it is. Uh, and Jerry says, and it's the project that killed my CNC. <laughs> uh, I think he had a spindle go out or something, if I'm not mistaken. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, which is never fun. But uh, What kind of spindle? Um, if I'm not mistaken, Jerry, if you're out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his was uh, the 1.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle i believe what happened to it uh well i don't know let's don't know. Maybe tell us okay saying that it's bamboo material and oh, it was old. 12, 12 inches wide with the one the one okay the one behind it was supposed to be 24 inches wide but <laughs> and i guess that's when it died on the on the other one okay he had an old spindle. Yeah, he had a, a 1.5 kilowatt water cooled. It was old. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry got his even before I got one. So that's uh, that's Jerry's Jerry Brown's project, Father's Day project. <laughs> Roger the Tinker says, I have one for sale cheap. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> they, 
David Pugh says he's watching from 32,000 feet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Make sure your, your tray is in the upright position. <laughs> I was going to say something about the mile high club, Bicho. <laughs> so, all right, let me get another picture queued up here. I got a I got a couple of different emails. I'm not sure which one to show first. I'll just pick one. This. Let me find the email so I can read along. Okay, this is the email that goes for this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is from Mike Seals. He says here in his email, he says another stand I made for a wedding to hold cupcakes and a cake. It's 40 inches across, 34 inches deep, and 16 and a half tall. And here you can see in this photo, he's just cutting out the parts. Right. Um, looks kind of like stair steps. Yeah. Yep. And as yep. I cross, there's- Very nice. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. real nice. Together. And then here's the one that makes me hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> the cake on top. and oh, That is sweet. All those. No pun intended. Delicious yeah, pun intended. Cupcakes on that thing. That's a beautiful thing. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that's really nice. And I don't know if Mike is out there. I don't remember saying his name when I was doing the shout outs a while ago, but. Mike, if you're watching and there's anything you want to add, uh, feel free to throw it in the, the comments there. Meanwhile, I'm going to He's not there. move on to the next batch, which is also from Mike Sills. Let's see. Yeah, there's probably a certain order I'm supposed to do. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm not sure these aren't in any particular order, but he says in the email, he says, this is a project I did back in November. It's a cake pop stand for a wedding. A cake pop is a ball of cake yeah. on a lollipop stick. Isn't that pretty tasty, too? I did not know that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Every single one of the parts were cut on my gatton. When I shipped it out, the entire stand weighed a almost 90 pounds in the boxes wow wow that's pretty heavy duty stuff there wow. okay yeah. now here you can see he's got uh one of them newfangled fancy bits cutting yeah. that profile on the side that's pretty slick yeah that's that neat. pretty slick and now let me see if i can go the right direction here and try to do these in somewhat some kind of order here um, I'm not sure. I guess let me go back and go back the other way, and maybe more of this will make sense. There we go. Yeah. Well, all right. I need to go right about here. I guess. Okay. So here, oh, look nice. Like yeah. Assembling it, but it's not finished yet. Um. And then there you go. Okay. Got a cake pop on it. All right. That is, and then this other picture, I guess, is just showing it. I guess he's letting the paint dry in those. Just great work. That is neat. That is fantastic. Let me look at this picture here again. That is just too cool. Now I wish I wish Mike was watching because I'd like to uh, 
ask him if this is kind of what he, what his thing is, you know, making wedding cake stands and stuff like that. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. All right. I don't see any. Um, any comments I need to address about that. So I will move on to the last of the pictures. And these were sent to me moments ago, which, by the way, I guess I should do this. If anybody's got pictures of a project that they'd like to show off, you can send them to this email address. And if they're sent before I sign off, pretty much, I will show them. Um, so let's see. Let me go find these other pictures. Okay, these were sent to me just a little while ago, and I hadn't really had a chance to look at them close. Uh, but these are from Rob Schuster, and I saw him out there a while ago. Um, David Hollinsworth says he's buying a Stinger 2 4x4 with three hit servo motors. Yeah. You mold it, that. It's basically the same thing I have. Um, That's pretty sweet. Uh, it's, it's a little bigger than the one I have. It's a. Uh, it's a nice machine. It's a high quality, great machine. I regret spending so much money. Um, well, you can always make more. But I can always make more. Because <laughs> if I would have known, you know, if I wouldn't, the only reason I bought that, the main reason, well, I've said this before, the main reason I bought it was because I was afraid at the time to build a Gatton, <laughs> which is kind of silly. He's got another comment there, David Hollingsworth. No experience, but I am a professional woodworker, and I have a Boss 24 by 36 laser. Yep, I have a – it's kind of the same thing with me. I have – I had a uh, – what's well, a Mercury. Uh, it's like a $20,000 24 by 36 laser. That caught fire, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And hmm. – uh, well, yeah. I don't think, you know, I don't think you really need any experience because, you know, you everybody don't. knows with a CNC, you just throw it on there and hit the cycle. Hit the button. <laughs> yeah. Push the button and out comes a product. Yeah. It just yeah. fits it out. There's nothing to it. Yep. Yep. The only yeah. way we get well, to call it, wood, the only way we get to call it woodworking is if we do a little sanding on it. Yeah. It's convenient. <laughs> I, I will say it's, yeah, it's convenient. We'll sand it whether it needs it or not, right? <laughs> That's yeah, true. you got to sand it. Yeah, you got to sand it regardless. It's convenient. I mean, as you know, David, with the Avid, it's convenient having a, well, actually, the Avid, you had to build it yourself also, but it's convenient with the Cam Master having a ready built machine. But <laughs> it's not convenient having to spend the, the amount of money that you can build four or five CNCs with it. Yeah. Being a professional woodworker, he'd probably be able to cut a good straight line. <laughs> Speaking of which, stay, speaking of which, stay tuned, guys. Pretty soon, like in the next month or two, maybe three, I'm gonna pull the trigger on another Gatton for the shop here. A small one, a really small one. That <laughs> big. He, he said small. We'll see how small. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as small. probably said that on the last one. And look at it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's smaller than four by eight. <laughs> Barely. It's seven by seven. <laughs> it's only because your wall was. Four by eight, thirty-two, power. seven by seven, forty-nine. Okay, so it's bigger than four by eight. <laughs> hmm. Technically speaking. Yeah. Yeah, but that's because I got a wall. <laughs> Larry says he just ordered his boss laser this week. Congratulations, Larry. That's awesome. Yeah, boss is a good laser. Those are awesome lasers. Yep. They're fun, too. Yeah, by the way, David, David says, I would have no idea how to build one, and Jerry nails it right here. None of us did. <laughs> That's why we yeah. went and got Dave's plans and parts kits, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, David, Dave has, if you haven't heard by now, Dave has a plans and parts kit, and basically all you got to do is cut eight 
plywood rectangles, buy the parts on the list, and follow steps one by one, and you've got the whole thing built. And then if I may do a plug, buy a plug-and-play hobby box controller, and you've got the motors and the controller. Hashtag You're done. Shameless plug. There's there you my, go. Guys, get it in. Plug. But if not, you could do the electronics, you know. If you're comfortable yeah. with it. If yeah, you're comfortable with it. Fun, the electronic part. It is for me. It is for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um uh, I mean you'll be you'll be happy with that that yeah. stinger, no doubt. Those are those are fine machines. Yeah, Jim McGrew's a great guy over at Cam Master. They're they're very helpful. I mean um, I will say this, uh, if you, not to compare the two communities, but Jim's one guy, he's very busy. And so he'll always answer you, but sometimes it takes, you know, a day, two or three days tops, you know, uh, I mean with, with Dave and with the rest of the community, you put a Facebook post and you'll get a hundred, uh, answers, whether they're all right or not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Dave and I, I mean, Dave and I and, and Ross and all of us, <laughs> we're always here to answer your questions. Uh, we have a great, great group, our Facebook group, which just recently I noticed I was approving uh, four or five new people um, just a little while ago. And I noticed we're up over 1,300 members now. So well, That's a beautiful thing. Leo. Leo Stagger says it's all yeah. fine until you let the magic smoke out. <laughs> that's right. There that that's the jaw of the line right before the smoke comes out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh all right, I got another email from uh, somebody with a picture, so let me move on and uh we'll show these. These are from if I didn't mention already, these are from Rob Schuster. The rotary thing. Schuster. <laughs> Rob Rotary Guy Schuster. <laughs> yeah. This is a mess of uh, police department uh, thing here. Looks pretty slick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice indeed. I like that. Rob, if you're out there and want to tell us any more, well, let me go find his email. He might have. Let's see where it says. He says, here are photos. Of another badge I did recently. Okay, so there's the badge. A drum he's working on. So there's, uh, if you haven't seen Rob's uh, amazing, I don't even know how to describe the thing. It's just a rotary, it's a rotary <laughs> CNC that he designed and built. And uh, it's just amazing. So go check out his uh, YouTube channel, um, which I believe is called Rob Schuster, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and subscribe to him and check out. He's got some cool videos. And we've had we featured him on the show again uh, or in the past uh, with the rotary thing. But just, just downright cool stuff is what Rob does. Uh, then we've got a wine bottle stopper display. He says, my sister-in-law collects wine bottle stoppers. And wow. she asked me to make a display. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Now that on the side, Rob, is that, is that engraving? Or laser. Or is that laser? It almost looks looks like laser. Almost looks like laser. Well, let's see what Rob says. Okay, yeah, Rob says to find him on. It's V carved. V carved. Okay, well, it's pretty fine detail, isn't it? Yes, it is. He says, "Yep, just search Rob Schuster CNC, and you will find it." Uh, Larry's doing a plug for his uh, JTEC 2.8 watt. Never been used. If anybody's in the market for one, uh, 
Becca says she likes that rock. I do too. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have a laser. Oh, he yet. says he doesn't have a laser yet. Well, there you go. <laughs> call Larry Doug. There you go. <laughs> and if you need a spindle, call uh let's uh let's Roger the Taker. On the <laughs> oh, I think uh Jerry Brown's got it. Jerry's gonna up. get it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's already spoken for. Well, that's pretty cool. I like uh that is pretty neat. I like that. And that let's see, let me go back and look. That's gonna hold looks like twelve, a dozen or so. At least. Stoppers. And I'll stop on this one because he says, I will be filling the pocket on the drum with epoxy. So, yeah, be sure and send us some pictures uh, when you get that completed, Rob. Always like seeing your drum stuff. And that is also very cool right there, too. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, Rob doesn't want to work. He just wants to bang on the drum all day. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Man. <laughs> Man, I don't know about that. Okay, let me, I got one more here. Let me get it queued up. Todd Lundrum, great song. This one queued up here. <laughs> Voila, another panel is wired. Oh, this one's pretty slick. This one is from Keith Painter. Ah. Yeah, See? look at there. Very nice. Kristen's Horse Farm, established 2018. Love it. Sure, you didn't use a scroll saw on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a scroll saw. That's good for a scroll saw right there. <laughs> well, he might have blackened in the the mm -hmm. the uh, V carve. You never know. Yeah. All right. He's out there. He's out there. Uh... Yeah, he was. That's... Unless he just sent it and left, but seven nineteen, he was. Let's see. Let me let me 19. read what he put here. He says, uh, "Last but not least, made from three quarter inch cedar. It's twenty four inches in diameter. Black paint in the pocket cuts, and then poly. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Hmm." I like how he's got birds sitting up on the yeah on the fence posts, and the, the horse looks like they're looking at the bird. Yeah, like that. Those look pretty cool. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, that's all of the pictures I have as of right this moment. So, if anybody is wanting to make a deal on. <laughs> <laughs> think the spindle might be spoken for but uh i don't know he's he's uh not been able to find jerry on facebook oh he's under jeremiah brown yeah there he is him. you might won't find him on jerry he's only jerry brown on facebook or i mean uh youtube But he didn't yeah. want to be the California governor on Facebook. So Yeah, he's Jeremiah <laughs> to his friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you can sure find him on the uh, Gatton CNC Facebook group. Oh, yeah. If you're a part of that. If not, you can search and find him any other way. Sherry yeah. says, I need to formally change my YouTube. That governor has ruined my channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, much. Of course, they got a new governor that's kind of 
Making the old one almost look good. Much I hate to say that, but <laughs> anyway. Well, California? Yeah. That, California. Yeah. California. Anything new makes anything old look bad. I mean looks look good. Because yeah. it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. <laughs> and my apologies. Apologies if anybody's from California, but Yeah, Becca's so glad I live in Texas. Me too, Becca. No, don't worry. Most of the people that hang out with us that are from California agree with us about California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Not think. most, all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, all the photos I have. Let me click the email thing over here and see if anybody else has sent anything. Um, a lot of good, a lot of good stuff. And I see all the time, excuse me, I see all the time pictures on Facebook uh, that people share. And there is a lot of good, good uh, stuff being produced out there. Not necessarily with Gatons, but with all CNCs. Yeah, and that's what we're Most about. Of the stuff I see is with Gatons because I don't really look at the... <laughs> I don't look at any of the other groups. I'm too busy with the, the ones I have. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff I see posted in there. In yep. fact, I don't uh, I don't think he's watching tonight. Who's that? Um well there's a guy that's in the group that he was uh talking about how he, he posted this question on the group the other day and it was does anybody else have this problem and what it was is he had gotten so busy you know how it is when you start off you, you think well i'm just going to do this as a hobby and make stuff oh, for yeah. family and friends and all this mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know you know you're so busy you don't have time to do that and that's what this person was um posing the question he's wanting to know if anybody else is having those those kind of problems is yeah. this from the guy that's uh it's got about 40 40 uh best sellers and he ain't got time to do all the stuff he wants to do yeah he says uh no time to make fun stuff for family and friends thinking about turning off the etsy site yeah that's so him relax. yeah that's well i mean it's an easy solution is is uh it's like me with the hobby boxes. If it gets to the point where they are taking up way too much of my time, of my personal time, you know, or selling too many of them, it's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry to say it's simple supply and demand. Either mm -hmm. the price goes up or, or the wait time is longer or whatever the case may be, or, or I stop altogether if, you know, but, uh, I mean, business 101, he should raise his prices on Etsy. But I agree if, if, if it's, if it's not worth it to him, then he should quit well, on Etsy. He was saying that he's right in the middle. He's not making enough money from Etsy to quit the day job. Right. And stuff. And and, and uh, he don't want to be at the day job, I'm sure. But Yeah, then, uh, then he's, he gotta, had, then he's yeah. got to raise the prices. <laughs> yeah. Raise yeah, it's, price. uh, it's a tough, uh, tough thing because, you know, a lot of times people will keep their job, even if it's one they don't like just because mm -hmm. of insurance yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's a whole new ball game when you start doing this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the, the people that truly, truly make money in woodworking are, I've always said are the cabinet makers, the ones that mm -hmm. make high end cabinets for eight or $10,000 and stuff. Everybody else, 99% uh, of the people, it's, it's just retired guys that, that not enough to make a full salary. Certainly not enough to, to, to pay a, a full mortgage and 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 uh, and live on. Carl Whitaker asked a question there. I see it. Do you want to take that one, uh, Mister <laughs> Russ Meadows? Uh, how to profile a three D project? All you have to do is is put a vector around it. Cut it right out. Do you yep. know offhand how to? Tell him how to do that. I can screen share it. That well, there's a, there's a button up there in the modeling tabs, 
if you have Aspire. Now, I don't think you have it in VCAR Pro. I can't remember for sure. Yeah, it's in it's in VCAR Pro. Let me get it set if up. If it's in there, then all you got to do is click the button. Let me find a... Uh, and it's just that easy. Yes, it is. I got to go find something 3D because I haven't done anything 3D in a long time. <laughs> But uh, hang okay. tight there, Carl. I'll find you an answer right here. Yeah, if it's an SDL that you that you bring in, or if it's one that's uh, oh, native. Yeah. Just let me just grab something out of yeah. there. Yeah. Out of their thing here. Yeah. Find something. All right, we'll just bring this apple in here. Okay. Now, if I can remember where it is, you may have to help me. <laughs> I can never remember. I, I know it, it's, it's uh, a little. There's a little oh, got in the modeling tab. Yeah, you? it's in the modeling tab. Share, share your screen, Dave. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not even sharing screen. No. What the heck, Dave? Come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I got this apple here, Carl. And if you're in the modeling tab down here, we're you know, here's the drawing tab. Yeah. There's the modeling tab. And if you come up right here, yeah, it'll say create vector boundary around selected components. So, Booyah. Oh, I had it highlighted. So if you hit that. It will draw a boundary around it. Yeah. And if you come in here, you can see it. You can see the line. Right there. So you would highlight that. Let's see. He was asking how to profile, right? That's and what he it, said. Then he comes in and says it's a panel. A panel? Then, I mean, uh, oh, it, well, if it's a panel... What you, uh, if if you're talking about, let's say you're putting that apple on a square panel, then you just simply make the square, and then you pocket in between that and the and the uh, and the outer edge. Uh, if you want to make a border around the the apple, then uh, do the offset, as I'm sure Dave is going to show. Yeah, well, you can you could highlight this vector that I just made. And then you could come over here and offset it. Let's uh, let's set it for an inch. So I could do that. Yeah. Okay. I actually had it set for both. So let me get it. <laughs> but yeah, you could do something like that. Or you can cut this vector and do it. Or if it's just on a like a rectangle shape or whatever, you'd have another square out here. Mm -hmm. And you would just do it like you'd normally part one out. And that way you have a raised... Uh... Uh, profile and then and then everything else is flat uh, to the lowest part of the of the apple. So you're yeah, not as hard as you thought. <laughs> it's just that easy. What did they say? <laughs> push a button. <laughs> yeah, just hit the wood on there. Just, yeah, just push the button. <laughs> push the button. It's easy. All right. I don't know if we got his question answered or not. He says it's a panel, so I'm. I'm not I'm sure. assuming it's like uh, uh, a pretty good sized panel. Got panel. it, guys. That's what I need. He he uh, he just answered. Okay, okay. That no charge, buddy. No charge. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I know every time I get ready, I don't do 3D stuff very often, and I especially don't do 3D stuff where I need to add that vector around the the model but whenever i do i always have to hunt for it i'm surprised i found it that quick i'll be back I in the shake it where it's at yeah man just hit that button it'll, it'll suck it around there but, uh, now what's what's a little thing that's different in that respect is sometimes i'll i'll have a an image that i've drawn or sucked in and i made it a an stl okay i've made it that but when I when I draw it in, it's got a uh, it's it may not be a, it won't be a flat piece, it won't be a round piece. It'll be something that's oblong and of different colors and different shapes, and it's not it doesn't have the circ I mean the the vector around it. 
it actually has a vector around the square that it got sucked in on. Now, when you when that happens, you actually have to draw that vector yourself around it. Once you've done that, then you go click on the outside vector and delete it. And then you have your vector around it the same way as you would if you had to click that button. So there's, there's things to think about. Okay. Because I just did that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We got Jim B. FPV from New York. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they say it up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I hope we got your question answered there, Carl. And uh, let me click the email thing over here. If we don't have anybody else sending pictures or anything or no more questions, we'll go ahead and uh, sign off of here. Yes. Call it a night early. Come on. Dave Fincham asked you a question. What's yeah. your vector, Victor? That's, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of another line from that sh that movie. Uh, what is the other one they, they say? It's funny like that. I can't remember. Anyhow. Daniel Lang has a question. Let's see if we can... Uh, what does step pulse... In direction pulse to not sure if I understand, but saw on YouTube it didn't hurt to run step pulse at 15. Oh, you must be talking about in the uh, are you talking about those settings in Mach 3 for the motor tuning? That's what it sounds like. Um, so when he did that, it smoothed the motors out. Let me. Open up Mach 3 here. We'll do a screen share over here on this. Grab all this other nonsense out. And that, that stupid thing never enlarged it. All right, let's see. So we've got this. So I think you might be talking about. Right there, I'm back. <laughs> Oh, step and pulse direction. Right up your alley there, buddy. What does step and direction pulse do? I'm not sure I understand, but I saw it on YouTube. Didn't hurt to run step pulse at 15, direction pulse at 5. When I did this, it smoothed the steppers out. Yeah. Well, simply put, a stepper... If, he, hmm? if he's talking about this here on in Mach yeah. 3... They're suggesting one to five for the step pulse and zero to five for the direct yeah. pulse. Yeah. Um, to not to get too technical, but a, unlike a, a regular, you know, 12 volt DC motor, a stepper motor is one in which it moves, uh, and I don't want to say infinitesimal, but a very, very small increment, just a step, a tiny step. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, I believe it's uh, 1.8 degrees divided by 4, so be 0.45 degrees, 0.045 degrees. Well, anyway, whatever, whatever it may be, step, uh, a pulse, a step is, uh, is moving a step in one direction or another, or multiple steps. A pulse is how many pulses are generated per step. So it basically depends on on uh, the way the way your settings depend on your controller, depend on your stepper driver. Uh, some stepper drivers are more comfortable with more steps. Uh, more steps is smoother. It, in a nutshell, more steps is smoother, but not all can handle more steps. You know, um, it's like it's like imagine resolution in a camera. This is a completely different analogy, but 
imagine resolution in, in like your monitor. You'll have a much better picture with higher resolution, but some monitors are 800 by 600. So I don't care how high you set the resolution. It won't accept, it won't accept it past a certain amount. And it's the same thing with, with steppers. Uh, it's, it's as close as an analogy as I can come up with on the spot. Okay. Um, and it also depends on the motors as, as well. Some yeah. motors are geared for, for more steps, for less steps, or a certain amount. Of, the, the, the key is matching. Matching impedance, matching motors, matching steps, amperages, voltages. Okay. I got another email with some more pictures. Yay. It's awesome. Let me get it and get them queued up here then. Um, Todd Cox says higher micro stepping also lowers motor torque. Yep. So think of that. Yes. the opposite um okay got some queued up here all right this is from okay so this 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 is from jerry bonifield my good friend from california <laughs> And he says, this is a clock. Oh, look at that beautiful orange. Wow, look at there. Hey, hey, that's one of mine. Look at there. That's not sweet right there. That is nice. All right. Uh, he says, clock made from walnut on my garage works, 22 inches long by 11 inches high, two and a half inches thick. Wow. Finish is nine coats of lacquer. Wow. Clock dial is from Clock Kit. And I yep. like the, uh, I really like the way he's got the little rope looking stuff around there. That's, oh, that's, neat. that's pretty neat. That is very slick. Um, I love how he's got the custom router filter <laughs> on the top of that machine. Yeah. Well done, Jerry Bonifield. I like it. I like it. Yep. I joke about that because that's what I used to do. And I sure would do it if, if I still had that machine set up. I, I don't have that machine assembled right now. Yeah. Yeah. Do these. He's got, uh, look how pretty that is, man. That is gorgeous. That's just freaking beautiful. Very nice. Very nice looking wood. And there's the. There's the clock. Like it. That is not only a beautiful clock, but an excellent job of product. framing, of framing, of framing, framing the clock. <laughs> it's nice. He did a good job. Yeah. Very good, Jerry. Appreciate it. All right. I'll click it one more time and then see it. The thing of it is people wait till the last minute to send me pictures. And when you have, you know, pictures, especially if it's an attachment, it usually takes a minute for them to come through. So, uh, but send them if you got them. We'll try to get them on. If not this week, then another. Yeah, if, not, uh, if not this week, next week. That's just, uh, just a gorgeous clock right there, I think. I really like that. Oh, Betty Nice. Dave Finch and McGrees. Yeah. He's a, he's another friend from California, by the way. Mr. <laughs> Finch. 
Another another one that hates his hates local the governor. governor? <laughs> I don't I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. It also depends where in California. Well, because if you're in LA or any big city, then <laughs> I don't want to know you. Nah. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I did coming, a year over there coming, in the Navy, and Miami. <laughs> I uh, I didn't want I didn't lose anything in California. Yeah. All okay, right. Well, I guess we'll uh, start wrapping this one up then. If we don't have any more photos to show, any, any more? No more questions. Anybody got questions? I see. I don't know who this is. Mimi, whoever that is. Uh, I don't know. Can I get Dave's plans? Where can on, I, on, on his website. Where can I buy a kit? Apparently you're new. Yep. Or, I hope that's not my wife. Because she goes by that. <laughs> she goes by Mimi? Mimi. Oh, Mimi. Mimi. For the, to the grandkids, Mimi. Just, just about just like that. I hope she's not buying uh, building a CNC. There you go. And she didn't tell you. It's all right. She'd be better at it than I am anyway. Yeah. Uh, you can get all that information on DaveGatton.com. Yeah. I suspect that's. Uh, Earl some Walker's in the building. you with CNC. Which is. <laughs> Becca says no political zones. <laughs> no gotta leave, gotta leave no, California. No zone, oh, yeah. Central Central's good. Central's good. <laughs> yeah. C Central California's good. They're 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 far enough away from, from LA. Yeah, I buddy. <laughs> I think I, well, I will just go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Dave Clements has a question. Yeah, if you can't say you? something nice about California, just move on to the next subject. Yeah. <laughs> How is your spoil board with T tracks attached to the table? Okay, well, let's go back to glue. <laughs> let's go back to Jerry Bonfield's. Well, the one way to skin a cat. Because I think he might have been talking about Jerry Bonfield's pictures. As you can see, and mine is pretty much the same as what you see here in this picture, except I'm not sure that first layer looks like it might be three quarter MDF. Yeah. But in mine is plywood, that's the only difference. But I, I use plywood on this first layer and then I attach the um T track. I drew, I drew a blank there for a second. The yeah. T track with the screws and the the T track. Jerry looks like he's using the Rockler brand here because it's the blue. I use yeah. the orange aluminum, which is basically just silver. But they yeah. all have holes, like I think every four inches or three inches, something like that. So yeah. And that's why I like to use plywood for my bottom layer because that way the screws are screwing into something good and solid. Yeah. And then I cut the MDF strips and put them on here just like, yeah, and, and pretty what, much I, like what you see there. What I like to do, and a few people do this too, is I actually have, oh, imagine three layers of half inch MDF, or rather the bottom one being plywood, like Dave said, and you screw the tracks onto the plywood, the middle one being in between and flush with the, the tracks, and the top layer, glue it on top, and as long as you know specifically where your track is, only cut a quarter-inch slot from each one. That way, your tracks will press up against that top layer of, of, uh, of MDF. All yeah. the MDF layers are glued to each other, so basically the MDF, instead of just relying on those little weak screws, it's actually pushing against the the mdf itself the top layer which if you're clamping your piece down it's pushing down so it's 
it's a true clamp um, mm -hmm. as opposed to I, something I think, up your, your I think having the the MDF strips overlapping the T -track overlapping the T track exactly is probably more important if you're using MDF as that first layer than it is. Oh, I don't absolutely. think it's that big a deal if you're using plywood because you got plenty of. That's true. You got plenty, but through the yeah, track. but you you don't know how what a gorilla I am when it comes to clamping. <laughs> <laughs> I well, ripped them off. I anything. see. I see people that talk about that all the time, and it really doesn't take that much hold. Then you'd be see, surprised. You would probably, if you came and saw how I do mine, you'd be you'd be running around retightening every one of them because you'd think I don't like <laughs> them. Now. Yeah, you exactly. Don't, well, you here's... don't need to put that much. It's more, you know, holding it down than right. And here's 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 a few things about me about the my hold down way, which are not necessarily correct, and I don't recommend people follow what I'm doing. But this is the way I do it. Is number one. I use only like two or four hold downs uh, because I'm lazy and I don't want to distribute the weight, uh, the, 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 the clamping pressure throughout, which is wrong. Number two, like I said, I clamp them down a lot. But what I do is, and this is number three, I use a hammer drill to tighten the things. So and, and it, I get a really, really soft. Oh, oh, that, that was number. I'm sorry. That's number two. Number three is. I tend to cut uh, half inch, quarter inch, half inch, even three quarters in one blow with a compression bit. So, so there's a lot of lateral pushing on my. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I force my my CNC well past normal limits, which is not a good thing. Like I said, don't don't mm -hmm. do what I do, but. That's Keith, why I think it. probably the only one that knows for sure is Vectric. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're pretty, you know, keep their cards close to the vest, I think. Yeah. As far as release dates and that kind of thing. Rob says V Carve has a big announcement Monday. I suspect it will be version 10.5. I should have waited till Monday. I, heard, I don't even follow them. <laughs> so. I and just it, upgraded I didn't the print. Notice, did y'all notice when I had V Carve open a while ago and I was screen sharing? <laughs> did you have a new thing uh, update available? Because half the time I don't even notice that up in the corner. Yeah, uh, V Carve V Carve to me similarly V Carve to me is like hurricanes in Miami. Mm -hmm. I I find out when somebody tells me, <laughs> "Hey, did you know that there's a new hurricane or a new Vectric out?" Oh, yeah. oh, I, I should go upgrade. Yeah, I, go I just I just hit my windows. I just went up to Windows 10. I mean, not Windows 10. Uh, VCarve 10 today. It should have waited till Monday. The screws Man. have nuts on the bottom of the MDF board, says Jerry. Okay. Oh, okay. So you bolted them down. That yeah yeah he he probably used like eight thirty two or something like that. Any any any. That's a lot of nuts though, because there's holes like every. Well, four inches on that. If you want to go through the trouble, if you want to go through the trouble, I like it. I mean, it's bolting it down. Yeah, Raymond rather... Dick can ask the question though. Yeah, let's see. Could you do the same with a bit that cuts the keyhole the keyhole slots instead of the uh, T track? Oh yeah, uh, yes, they actually sell. Uh, they actually sell you gotta well for one thing you, you're gonna have a hole on one side where it enters so just be aware of that but they do have a keyhole uh, bit it's actually not called a keyhole bit it's for it's made for slat wall yeah but they have a bit for slat wall and uh, if you buy the right bit which is half inch by three quarter inch the then, then yes, you can with a quarter inch shank. With a quarter, it's quarter inch, and then the T is an extra quarter inch on either side, and it's half inch deep. So, mm -hmm. so they do sell the bit. You cannot do it with a regular keyhole bit because a keyhole bit only extends so far. So while you can go the depth and you can get a little bit of a slot, you're 
you are creating a T-track out of MDF, but that's useless because the mm -hmm. nut will go right, pull right through it if you use the MDF. Yeah. All right. It's uh, we're almost at an hour here. I got one more picture that just came through. <laughs> so I'm going to show it. This is from Charles Steed. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Charles may be an Alabama fan. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> I, I kind of like Alabama. Roll Tide. Oh, he made that for somebody that lives down there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think I think there was a little space right in here. He could have got something in there. <laughs> thing's pretty busy, but I like it. Tuscaloosa. You sure? You sure that was uh, Charles? Steve, not not Grant David. Yeah, Grant Denny. Uh, I need to, you know what? I need to send a picture of this to Grant. He'd love that. Grant's a big Alabama fan too. If you, oh yeah, that's what I've been hearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he loves Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. All right, guys. I guess we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. If anybody else has got as emailed photos. They will be showing next week. Uh, none of them, none of the rest of them has come in. That one just did pop in. But uh, always love seeing the photos, uh, you know, regardless of whether they were made on one of my machines or not. It's uh, I always like seeing the projects that other folks do because I'm not, I am not a creative person at all. Uh, yeah, everybody says that, and then everybody is. No, I don't. I don't think I am. Not when it comes to, you know, I can make CNC machines, but I'm not. I'm not good at that other stuff. I see, you know, like I'll see something, a picture of something else, and it gives me an idea for that. But it's I usually don't have very original thoughts on stuff like that. But anyhow, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Thank y'all, everybody that sent pictures in. And uh, thank you, Russ. Thank you, Javi. Glad to be here. Yeah. And we will see y'all next week. Everybody have a great weekend. Have a good one, guys. See you later.